you know what day is. My home Mondays. <laughs> right, a lot of uh, positive comments and questions and um, feedback from last week's vlog. Thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. If you haven't watched it, then I'll put a link up here now. So you go over and watch that. Once you've watched this, don't don't run off yet. Don't run off yet. <laughs> I heard a few comments about the uh, fuel filter being pretty grim. And it was. But it's all been done. It's all looking good. It all runs sweet. Sweet as a nut. But yeah, um, you'll see some more Gary stuff in this week's vlog. Because we've got some more things to be done. Let's crack on with the questions, shall we? Fast forward 20 to 30 years time, long-term plans with no bricks and mortar home, what are you going to do when living in a van is no longer possible? Right, I don't know really why you're assuming that it's no longer possible. Maybe in your head, uh, health reasons or government or diesel and everything's going electrical. Or, I, I don't know what your reason is for thinking that, you know, 20, 30 years um, is not going to be possible. Um... So let's just run along the lines of maybe health or something. Um, which would then mean I need something more static. So I might literally do that. I might look at a little static caravan or something. Um, if I can find a, a small piece of land or a farmer um, or even a static campsite. Um, and look, look that way maybe. Because I'm not really worried about bricks and mortar to be fair it's a great investment if you're willing to wait the time but i don't really want the hassle of it i just want the freedom i'm happy to stick my money in a bank or in, in in some bonds and some some uh other investments and that and let them just you know coast along um and just save cold hard cash at the end of the day yeah i could make a hundred grand 200 grand 300 grand in buying a house but i could also not and then when i need it you know and i've had the whole year the whole hassle of 20 30 years of hoping for that 200 grand or that 300 grand payout or whatever it would be and all the hassle going along with that oh my boiler's broke oh can you come do this i've got a light bulb out oh can you do that and yeah i know there's maintenance companies but then they take a chunk of your cheddar and then they're not even that great because I know people that have used them before and they still don't, they don't check the properties that well. Um, and if I'm swanning off around the world, then I don't want that as a headache, do I? So, but I think long term will be motorhome or van or something like that. And if I have to go static, then it will probably be like a static caravan or something. It might not even be in this country, it might be in Europe somewhere might be in the forest, might be under a bridge. I have no idea. I, you know what? Rewind five years, I didn't know I'd be here right now. So fast forward five years, I have no idea where I'm going to be. Next question. Now you've been in your motorhome three years plus, do you wish you'd have gone bigger, like a six berth or seven berth or even bigger? Um, No, three years in, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the size of this motorhome i'm not sure how long how, how well we go down with two people because there isn't a major area just to chill out and separate from each other because obviously the bed's up in the bunk and then there's just this area down here um i think if you're obviously good friends with whoever you're sharing in an apartment with or living with you know if it's your partner then you should get on well um but obviously getting on top of each other does cause you know, tensions. So if I was to go, uh, if I was living with someone, then maybe a little bit bigger. But as me, on my own, and maybe with like, you know, a couple of animals, like a cat and a dog or something, if I did have them, then that'd be fine. No. Um, but if I do in the future, maybe I might go bigger in the future, just so I've got some more space, some more living space for the future. Um, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But at the moment, no, don't regret buying this size at all next one how comes you don't have an intro on your videos on youtube like other van lifers do don't know i really don't i've never never worried about it i've never i've never made one to be fair editing's great and i do like editing but it takes me a while so i'd rather edit a video for you guys to actually watch rather than just edit an intro just to show i don't know i don't know do, do i need an intro would it be good for an intro i mean i've got loads of 
past photos and history and videos and trips and things and that. Um, do I need an intro? I don't know. I'm not too fussed either way, really. Do you think the problems you've had lately are from living in the motorhome full-time instead of just two or three weeks a year? Like, they're, they're meant to be used. So, obviously, he's talking like a typical... Uh, normal motorhome owner would only use theirs two to three times a year for two or three weeks at a time um that's typical i'm not saying everyone does that but that is the typical person that buys one um and right so first off the mechanical problems i've had and like the servicing and all that and you'll see the mechanical ones in this week's vlog um and i had the brakes a couple of weeks back brake discs that is all maintenance wear and tear just using it i'm, I'm, I'm coming up to sixty thousand miles on the motorhome so still still relatively new in terms of you know mile wise um but it's going to happen it's just wear and tear i'm using it so yeah that is going to happen so that's not that and it's the age i suppose that is coming to an effect now even if you hadn't even if i hadn't used it for that amount of time you'd still want to renew stuff um so yeah that's that the electrical side of things in one sense yes it is because I use it a lot, but majority, the majority of it is because it's not been wired properly. Um, and yeah, that's kind of basically all I can say really. It's not been wired properly the way it should, should be to be 100% spot on and safe, which I thought I was getting done, done. Um, but then like things like that relay, I mean, yeah, that's getting some hammering use because I'm using it every single day. You know, if it was just there sitting on tick over, or, although it's on, like I said, it was on for the past part of 15 years. If there's nothing really going through it, then it's not really getting much use. But then if I'm, you know, hammering, 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 using all the appliances um, and everything, what else I've got, then yeah, things are going to get used, things are going to wear out, things are going to break, things are going to get tested. Um, but no, I don't think anything's excessively thingy. It's just the poor wiring job that I've had done, which is poor. It's failing because it's poor. That's why I've called it a poor wiring job, because it's failing. If it was a diesel wiring job, it wouldn't fail. Um, or very rarely, and it'd only fail at the fail points, which would be fuses, not just like the melt and things. But no, so that's, that's the answer to that question. Uh, when are you coming to Scotland for a tour? I don't know. Maybe I'd like to try and fit something in in the autumn this year, if I could. I was meant to be going to Turkey this year, obviously with the whole corona malarkey. That's kind of, yeah, been put, well, that's kind of died. I think I'm not sure what's happening with that to be fair I don't think I'm going to be going so maybe I'll try and do a little Scotland tour instead I'm not sure I'm not promising that I'm not promising that because I don't know what's going on with Turkey yet but I would like I don't want to go in the midgy season though I don't want to go in midgy season you know there's quite a lot <laughs> for midges to munch and we don't want none of that I don't want to look like a, a chicken pot kid I really don't that's not a good look for the money maker. <laughs> but Scotland does look beautiful. And I think autumn it looks really nice with the, with the autumn colours. A little bit of snow on the mountains. And uh, yeah, just have to see where, where to go and we'll try and go. Next question. Did you ever consider an A-class motorhome when you was looking at yours? And would you ever consider one in the future? I have looked at a few in like now if I was looking to the future. I didn't look at any when I was buying this. Um, I just looked at them, thought mm, they look a bit weird because of the, the driving position. You're so far back, it's like a bus. Um, the way the the, sit, the wheels are on your, you know, where they are. And then you've got the massive overhang in the cab. Um, I know I drive a truck and that, but again, that's very straight front, very flat front. Um, and I don't like, the one thing I don't like about the a class is, is there's no driver's door i'm in and out of mine constantly 
and I don't like there not being a door. That's just a pre personal preference. Um, but that being said, they do offer some great layouts, which I have been coming round to, I suppose, and looking at. They've got you know the nice drop down beds, and then they've got a nice layout in the back. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'll look at them. I can't see me getting one, but. I'm warming to them more than I did. I didn't really look at them at all last time. I just went with a typical motorhome. So now, last question. And this question I get someone ask every week. Every week I get someone ask. Why do you put an apostrophe on the word Mondays in the title Motorhome Mondays? Now the answer to this question, some of you might already know, because I have answered it in the, in the comments a few times before. Now, when I'd done episode one of My Home Mondays, I put an apostrophe in the Mondays. I'm not the world's greatest speller. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shout that at all. I'm not gonna say I am, because I'm pretty poor. I usually shout out for Siri or Alexa or Google to um, spell something. And I messed up in the title, and some guy, he's been banned long, long ago, um, jumped on me, really trolled me. Oh, you've got to change that. You, you really got to change that. You've got to change it. You, got, you can't do that. You're stupid. You've got to change that. Me being childish, we're now 40 episodes in with an apostrophe. <laughs> Just to wind him up. <laughs> I mean, that deserves an air high five, don't it? Come on. <laughs> Yep, so, you know, pick on me, I'm just going to wind you up even more. I'm just going to wind you up. That's why trolls don't bother me. They really don't. I blow love hearts and kisses to you. Really don't, because it just really, really winds them up. So, yeah, he uh, he done that, and now it, there's like 40-plus episodes with an apostrophe. Um, oh, and my reply to him uh, had about 10 apostrophes. <laughs> Just because I could and just because I really wanted to wind the little troll up to push him back under his little bridge. Um, and yeah, I think I hurt his brain. I think I broke his brain, which is quite funny, to be fair. <laughs> it's quite funny. So that is why there's an apostrophe in Mondays, in my home Mondays. And I'm not changing it. It's staying. It's, it's part of the furniture now. It's got to stay. It's got to stay. <laughs> Right, that is all the questions for this week's My Home Mondays, guys. If you have got any questions for next week, um, drop them in the comments below, hit me on Insta, or drop me an email at darren, D-A-R-R-A-N, at theothermotorhome.com. If you've got any videos you want to see, then drop them in the comments. I have got a video coming this week, a park-up video, should be out on Wednesday. Ooh, park-up video, park-up video. Right, so look out for that, and then the vlogs on Friday. God, look at all this content. God, I'm just so generous. I'm so generous. Have a great week, guys. Take it easy. Bye.